This is kite buggying at Western Supermare. Using similar technology to aircraft wings, they can reach speeds of up to 60 miles an hour. Modern design at its best. And yet, the first attempt at making one of these happened nearly 200 years ago, not far from here. Its inventor called it the Char Volant, and I want to have a crack at making one and bringing it back here to the beach at Weston. I'll have to be able to steer my kite, and I imagine it'll need to be pretty big. Clearly, I've got some work to do. My journey starts in Bristol in the early 1800s, home to one George Pocock, Methodist preacher, schoolmaster, and father of 11 children. When he wasn't busy with all that, he was playing with kites. His experiments were ambitious, dangerous, and usually involved his own children. Pocock loved to show off his inventive genius. And in one particular attention-grabbing stunt, he put his young daughter in a wicker chair, hoisted her up into the air with kites, and then flew her across the Avon Gorge. Fortunately, she survived and went on to become the mother of the cricket legend W.G. Grace. In 1827, Pocock published a book entitled The Aeroplustic Art or Navigation in the Air by the Use of Kites or Buoyant Sails. Inside, he imagined real-world uses for his kites, particularly at sea. But it was Pocock's invention of a horseless carriage, powered by kites, called a char volant, which thrust him into the public eye and earned him a cult following. Unfortunately, no char volants survive today, but at the Museum of Bristol, they do have one of Pocock's kites. I'm meeting Paul Chapman, kite historian and Pocock nut. So, Paul, what prompted Pocock's fascination with kites then? Oh, I think at the time, the whole of that, um, of that period, people were interested in, in, in aviation. It, not aviation as such, aerostation, balloons, um, anything that would go in, in the sky. Um, obviously, as a young boy, Pocock wouldn't have been able to fly in a balloon, but he would have been looking at the sky and thinking, what can he fly? So this is one of Pocock's original kites, then? Absolutely. It, 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 it's an incredible find. This is, as far as I know, it's unique. It's the Necker. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is a much smaller kite, but with his big Charvelant kites, they were, they were huge. What was special about them? Pocock developed this system for travelling using kites to pull him along, where he had one kite connected to a, a four-line controllable kite, and that itself, the four lines came down to his carriage that he could control. And that enabled Pocock to take his carriage out onto the country roads and travel. And there's one story of um, an occasion when he was travelling and there was a very expensive carriage in front of him, and Pocock g'd up the kites and the carriage g'd up the horses. And they had a little race, and Pocock's carriage pulled up alongside, and then, shock and horror, he saw the royal crest, and it was, it was the Duke of Gloucester. And I think they, the two gentlemen got out and had a little chat about the business, and uh, off they went in their respective directions. Back in my workshop, it's time to get building. I'm working from Pocock's original design. Right, well, this pattern shows something that's really, well, very complicated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a sort of a prototype version of Pocock's kite buggy. Pocock's own prototype was literally a plank of wood on wheels, driven by his son. So that's exactly what I'm making. All right, so that's the buggy done. Now I just need uh, to do the kite. For the kite's frame, Pocock would have used wood, but I'm going for fibreglass to give it strength. As for the kite's skin, well, the one at the museum was made of treated cotton. I'm using the modern equivalent, ripstop nylon. So, there you go, it's, it's definitely kite shaped now, and it's huge! This is only the prototype. Pocock's one would have been much bigger than this. Now, all that's left is to sew it all together. I could be here for some time. It's test 
stay, and at Weston, it's looking pretty windy. The modern buggies are going well, but I'm worried my kite will be ripped apart before it even leaves the ground. I'm enlisting the help of former kite buggy champion Dom Early. If anyone can get our Pocock kite into the air, it's him. At least that's what I'm hoping. Those are the control lines, okay. and these are the main lines. This kite is fiendishly complicated. So, one of these white ones, which had the sleeve on the other end, oh, uh, is one. the blue one. Is it the blue one? Oh, well yeah. remembered. Will attach to the centre line. The kite is controlled by four individual lines. If any are the wrong length, even by a fraction of an inch, the kite will come crashing down. So my big concern is that when we put this under sort of te te torsional tension, you know, when it's under twisting, it's just going to snap. And that's the weak point in the kite. OK. I think I'm right to be concerned. The wind is continuing to freshen. But having got this far, we can't give up. I hope you're impressed by my needlework. I am. That. That's the kite. Excellent. What do you think? Well, it yeah. looks good. So, with the pilot kite up, it's time to give it a go. OK, I think you can hold the kite up now. Here we go. Three, two, one. Off she goes. Whoa! <laughs> Disaster! Something's clearly not working. How much more do you want this time? Another six inches. While Dom examines the control lines, we inspect the kite for damage. OK. Fortunately, it's OK. You ready for another go? We're ready for another go. Take two, and this time, it's got to work. You ready? Yeah, ready. Right, three, two, one, go. Look at him, he's steering, he's steering. I've got a definite right hand. Come on, kite, up you come. Oh, it's beautiful. It's very bendy. <laughs> George knew what he was doing. Right, you go, sir. Here, your carriage awaits. What do you want me to do? Put it in front of you? Yeah. Yeah, you're good. Right. And you can steer as well, can you? Yeah. Come on, kite. Oh. Let's see if I can make another turn. <laughs> see you in Bath. Brilliant. Proof positive. Pocock had it right all along. Two centuries later, it's still a great idea. If only George could see how far it's come today.